I mean, it's such a lot. I mean, it seems like another, another life purpose to me now. When we all said it, but it's sort of like a dream. You know, all of the, I mean, we had, a, we, had a, we had a good times out of it, but we also had a lot of misery. So, towards the end, that we weren't sort of actually, sort of say, the best of friends. Everyone was trying to fight everybody else because everyone, everyone did, did want to own it to themselves and say, it's over. But you never know, they might get in a new lineup now. Dio's left and what's it? Uh, a preacher's left. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, I'm going to get another lineup. And you never know, they might go out and just be the biggest thing since sliced bread, you know. <laughs> I think Tony should, should drop a Sabbath name and put a band together. And I mean, if they did that, I mean, if they, if they go out again and it fails again, it'll be the end, you know. The total end. If they were to just shelve that name, and this is not just me, I'm, it, it must sound that I'm just saying this. Because I'm jealous. Of, what have I got to be jealous for? You know, I mean, I, I mean all I'm saying is that they, they should have shelved the name from the word go. And then maybe in the future, if we all decide to do a, a one-off tour together as the original lineup, we could have gone back on the stage and did our own stuff again, and it would have been great, you know. But it's too late for that now. Do you think that Sabbath spawned any other types of bands like that? Oh God, sure. We, we, we spawned a lot. And Eddie Van Halen was a big uh, admirer of Johnny I am. But they took it a stage further. I mean, where does where does Sabbath stayed in the one one vein, the one thing? All the bands we we, we, we were, you know, at the end of the day, they were coming in with these new albums, and I just turned around to them and said, "Ah, this is screwy, this is man." I remember saying this. How come the bands that we once influenced are now influencing us? Do you not think there's a problem? Which is a fair comment, you know. If a band that once used, used to see these guys in the front row going, "Yeah, I'm copying your licks," take that lick and do. Uh, updated version of it, and then, then you get inspired of their lyrics. Then there's something wrong with you. You've got to either say, okay, let's do something and have another go, and go all out, or just break up and do our own things. Mm. It's true. I mean, there, were, there were some Van Halen tracks which sounded like, you know, Sabbath 1982. Yeah, but, but Eddie Van Halen is a great guitar player, he's a phenomenal guitar player. I think Randy got a lot, a lot of his stuff from. Well, well, Randy and Eddie were, were from the same area and they played the same circuit, so I suppose they were the two of the very similar kinds. So I played in, in an area of, of a town, there's only one area, so there's, so there's like two or three good guitar players in that area. Yeah. And they're all trying to battle to outdo each other, and so whoever gets there first is. Yeah. I mean, if it was Randy Rhodes, and I'd have got Eddie, if Randy Rhodes had been with Van Halen, and I had a cup to Eddie Van Halen. Mm -hmm. That all said Eddie Van Halen was trying to cup off Randy Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that Eddie, Eddie Van Halen got there before Randy right. Rhodes, you know. Mm -hmm. had the first shot, you know. And that is a good player. Eddie Van Halen is a very good player. Randy Rhodes is a very good player. Mm -hmm. There's a million good players out there. You just got to find them, you know. Just takes a bit of time to find them. It's just like there's so many named people that think, well, I can't use Joe Bloggs. He's nothing. I've got to get Eric Clapton, or I've got to get to Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page was found, was discovered by somebody else. Like I don't want to, I'll never use a name you turn play for from Rocky. Because all you got, first of all, you got to deal with their ego because they're the biggest thing they think in the world. I mean, I can't stand the working with the people with egos. If anyone works with me and they start to cup an ego, I'd rather get rid of them. So just because an ego will spread through a band faster than a plague. You just got to just keep it level, and the reason that I kept going all the time is because I can. I, I don't say I'm the greatest because I, I mean there's someone. There's always someone out there greater than me. I just had a, a great lucky break. I'm a lucky man at the age of 33. I mean I realise it all. You know, there's so many people that think, sniff it, shove it up your ass, shove this up your arsehole, and drink that, and I'm cool, man. You know, I. But that's fucking insane, man. It's like shoving your head in the sun and waiting for the storm to pass. <laughs> I mean, I went through all that, I grew out of all that crap. I lived with it for fucking 11 years. It was so, well, like, so drug oriented for a while. It was like fucking, how you go, sniff. It's a sniff morning to each other. It's a good morning. It's like crazy. I mean, it's like, it's like you experiment with it all and then you either grow out of it or you don't. Or you, it grows out of you and you end up in a fucking box. But the pace of living and this kind of a life is like, it's like a 300 mile an hour job, you know, it's like all the racing you get, 
to a point you sold yourself on a thing that I, I invented for and uh, what's it called? Adrenaline spur. Oh, it's just something. You've got so much adrenaline that you can't, it's just chopping down like a truck in the eye. It's like, you know, you have, you have to take a drink now and to pull it down a bit, you know. When you're drunk and you're sitting on a television and you're watching and you're sitting there and you're sitting and you're sitting there 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 and you're sitting Drug addiction, if you need some help, you're all fuck, you know, so, you know, just, I mean, there's always something, something again. Everything you like in this world <laughs> is bad for you, you know. <laughs> you know, it's, fuck, it's a good job we only to Hollywood, because God would not be in some trouble. <laughs> uh, was, was Sabbath the first professional band that you were in? Yeah, yeah. Professional? No way. No, <laughs> the first band. The first sort of fucking lunacy that I was ever involved. It was kind of, it had its moments, so it did have its great moments, but so it became like a dinosaur. We got too big to fucking survive, you know, because they wouldn't, they wouldn't come down to the terms that they thought they were too good to do anything. But, but like, you know, the Ze like Zeppelin, were had reached that niche where they could record, and like Pink Floyd had reached that niche where they could record and not go out on the road because they were like an invisible band. But when they came out, it was like, <coughs> you know, like God had arrived. And Sabbath kind of was uh, blinded by the fact that they thought they should have been there, yeah. but we never quite got there because we weren't prepared to put the hours in, which the other people did. Because like. Zeppelin went on the road at first for fucking three years before they could have even bothered to do that, or even afford to do that, you know. Where Sabbath went on the road for like a six week to on and a three week to on, three weeks off, six weeks on, two weeks off, here or there, take a break. Biggest but hypochondriac you've ever met in your life. <laughs> I mean, we were fucking. We must have spent most of our earnings on doctor's fees, you know. I've got a pain, I've gone to bed for three days. He's fucking got indigestion from eating too much food from Chinese food the night before. You know. I've got cancer. <laughs> if I die, bury me in England. <laughs> when Bill Ward used to have a bag so full of, I mean, you, could, you couldn't. He got to the point, man, that we went on the road one time and he even had a snake bite kiss. <laughs> I said, Where the fucking hell are you ever going to see a snake, man? That's where on this earth are you ever going to see when you're going to go and fucking dive in the zoo or something? You had a, he said, you never know. Some of these snakes run pretty fast when you're driving across the street. Oh, mum, still water. On a fucking 650 motorbike across the fucking Colorado the desert. I'm going to have this sucker. I mean, fucking the snake ever bit him. The snake is going to have to get fucking shots. <laughs> He was like, we used to call him Dr. Bill, and he was like, he had, had Valiums forever. If you had anything wrong with it, you'd go and see Bill. He was fucking full of it. Things for everything. I mean, when he came up with that snake bite kit, it was the <laughs> ultimate. Fuck, you know. I don't even see one of those things. It's like a little thing at your phone, it's like a razor. Yeah. I said, what if he bites up the arse, Bill? He said, someone's going to have to suck the poison out. <laughs> 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 it all come to me, man. <laughs> Find a new friend, man, because I'll just fell out with you. <laughs> what other high moments were there for you, uh, with Sabbath, in terms of material and... I mean, I suppose, when we, when we first got to play the big arenas, was a big, it was like, we went, we went from one to play the two nights at the Whiskey Room, I saw was and from, from the Whiskey Room to the Forum. Which I thought was, I hate to play before. I've really? never played before and since then. I hate it. <coughs> I just did it so I had the sound. But it's sooner than the long bit of it. The sound that started, it's like a weird sound when you're playing the stadium. So the restrictions they're having in these halls now is like making it virtually impossible to fucking break even. You know, if you go check a minute over, you're playing like a fucking overtime bill of like more than what you've earned on the gig. You know? mm -hmm. It's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So when Sabbath first came over, the, the whiskey is where they played? They used to do a lot of, a lot of whiskey. Really? Is it like in late 68? 
Early 70s, 71. Yeah. Mario was there, wasn't he? Yeah. He, I mean, I've never forgotten Mario. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah, we've got a social down with a drink with him. And every time, I, every, so from the first day I've ever met that guy, if I go down to the club and I'll see Mario, he always comes in, you know, he's a bottle of booze for us. And he, and he don't have to. He's a great guy. He's a real, he's a, one of the genuine blokes in, in this business. I mean, it's, I've seen a lot of him and I'll always forget that I've I'll never forget that man's name as long as I've He's always been a nice Even when I had a bad period, I go up there and say, how you doing? I'll sit down, have a drink. He's a great guy. Well, he's not one of these guys that buys you when you're up and says, fuck you when you're down. He's it's, it's always been the same guy. You feel. Yeah. He's done a lot for rock and roll. It's, it's getting bad in this town now, man. Why oh, the yeah. fuck was going on? It's like a <coughs> rock and roll. Depression's hitting it. Someone should... Just get a rock club, because anybody wants booze, man. Just get a club where they can fucking hear music. Forget the booze licenses. Just go in and hear music, man. Just dying out fast in this town. And it's a sad thing because there's so much talent trying to just die with it.